Hey everyone, and welcome to Wicode. In this video, I'm going to be going over ordinality, specifically PostgreSQL. So, ordinality was introduced in PostgreSQL 9.4. What it does is append an additional big int column to the result returned from a query. And this big int column contains a counter beginning at 1, and is incremented for each row returned by the function. So to show you this real quick, what I've done here is I've selected everything from a nested array. So I've been, I used the function string to array. So we have this string here, wait code videos are amazing. And we have the delimiter, a space, which means it'll make it make this string into an array based off the delimiter. So the of course the resulting um, the result will be each word that is in between a space. So we have wait code videos are amazing. We have wait code videos are amazing because it's separated by that. And then what we do next is we unnest this array which will basically make each one of these words into its own row. Because if we didn't use unnest, like say we just did this, and then ran it, you can see we just have the array here. But let me undo these, do, do this real quick. You can see, if we run this, that puts them all in their own row. And now let me show you, this is a good way of showing ordinality, because say for example, we add just the keywords with ordinality, like this, and we press play again. You can see now we have an extra column here called ordinality of the type big int, which is one, two, three, four, all the way through to nine for each one of the words in our um, string right here. And so the main purpose of ordinality is to retain the original position of each element in whatever it is you unnested or want aggregated. This is needed because of something called the SQL Server Query Optimizer. And what this does is analyze the number of execution plans for the given query, estimate the cost of each plan, and then select the plan with the lowest cost. Therefore, the query optimizer is free to order rows as it sees fit, as long as the order is not explicitly defined. This is why ordinality is most useful in the case of set returning functions, because set returning functions often return more than one row, something that the unnest function does. So for example, this unnext, unnest function right here is a set returning function because it returns more than one row, and we want this order to be preserved when we aggregate them and so forth. Also, something you may have noticed is that the two columns that were returned have the titles unnest and ordinality. So you can see we have here unnest as the column title and ordinality here. With ordinality, you can change these by doing the following. So say we could do with ordinality as we could do ARR, then word, and then just anything like soccer like this. So if we run this, you can see this has changed the names of the columns. So what this does is make the unnest column have the title word and the ordinality column have the title soccer. So clearly you can name these columns whatever you want. So we could name this, I don't know, just baseball. Same thing, run it, and now you can see it's baseball. And also the word um, ARR, for example, is irrelevant. This can be whatever you want it to be. For example, we could even just change this to like, I don't know, dragon or something. And then if we run this again, we can see we get the same result. And so what is the purpose of this word here then? This one right here? Well, we can use it to access the columns we made with ordinality and the unnest function. In other words, it's basically an alias for the table that we made. So this table here. Um, for example, say we want to access just the word column. Something we could do is just to demonstrate this better, we could do dragon dot word. And then if we run this, you can see all we get is this word column here. And we could also use it at the end of the query, such that if we want to order in a descending order by ordinality. So we could do order by dragon.soccer, and then maybe descending like this. And run this. Oh, I believe I forgot a semicolon. Oh, I believe actually no, I said soccer instead of baseball, so we changed it to that. And so we do that. We can see now that we have. Um, ordered it in the reverse way. So the wit code videos are amazing. You can see wit code is now tagged with the last number. And of course, we don't have to use dragon.soccer or dragon.word. So we could just say word here, and we could just say baseball here, just like that. And you can see it still turns out fine. But I just wanted to show you that because I feel like it better demonstrates the relationship between this word here and um, or the table alias and these columns. But so that this makes more sense, let's change these words to ones that make sense. So I'm going to keep this to be word, but I'm going to change this, for example, to item underscore position. And so then I'll change dragon also to table alias like this. And then instead of ordering by baseball, we are going to do item position like that. And let's just run to make sure everything's working again. Cool. And then change this to... Select all, awesome. 
Now, let's show you an example of how we can use this ordinality to establish order during an aggregation. So an aggregation is simply computing a single result from a set of input values. However, to establish an order during aggregation, you have to specify an order by statement within the aggregate function. And to show you this, I'm going to do something called a common table expression. Just think of this basically as a temporary result that you can reference to later. So I'm going to reference this whole thing. I'm going to say with my CTE, which stands for common table expression, as, and then I'm going to surround this in uh, parentheses like this. And then just to show you this, this is basically just a representation. You can think of it as a variable for everything in here. Now I can just do select all from my CTE and it should be the same, and you can see it's the exact same. So this is basically just something called a common table expression. I'll make videos on this later if you want to check them out, but it's just basically a way to represent this. And now what we want to do is aggregate every word in our column into one big string. And we're going to do this by using the function string aggregation. So the function string underscore ag like this. And what this takes is what we want to aggregate, the delimiter, and then an optional order by clause. So that what we're going to do is, of course, we're going to say select string aggregate and then word, so the word column, and then our delimiter will just be the comma. And we're going to order them by the item position or the big int value that or big int column that ordinality gave it. And then we're going to do that from my underscore CTE. And so let's run this. Of course, I forgot the by right here, so just order by like that. And you can see now we have everything aggregated back in the way it was originally. And what we can also do is turn every row in this text column into an array. So let's get rid of this. And what we can also do is select array underscore ag and do word, so the column word, and then order by item position from my CTE. And so now let's run this and see what it looks like. And so now you can see we get the um, text array of the same thing. And so this function here is similar to the string aggregation function, but it doesn't take a, lim a delimiter and our order by clause is not comma separated. So if you can remember, we just have word order by item position. If I go back to the previous one, you can see we have a comma, the delimiter, and then order by. But basically, all in all, if you want to use ordinality, it is used to basically keep the position of each element. Because when you are aggregating or unnesting the um, the order of the items is not always preserved, and so what you want to you want to use ordinality to make sure that it is preserved. But so this is my video on ordinality. If you find any or if you have any trouble with this, just uh, message me in the comments. I found this a little bit of a complicated subject, and I was looking around. I couldn't really find anything that really made sense to me on this. So if you're struggling with this, just let me know. I'll see what I can do. But um, besides that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.